everyone to our first meeting, I guess, of this term of the uh, public safety meeting. Glad to see everybody be able to make it this evening on such a rainy night that we have here in Rutherford County. And hope everybody's remaining safe uh, as, as we uh, face the rain that we have and some of the flooding streams that we have. Before we begin, it's not normal that we do this, but due to the fact that we have so many first responders that over in North Carolina are either traveling in any way, I've asked Commissioner Phillips here if he would just lead us in a word of prayer for those individuals that uh, are out there taking care of those people. Would you stand with me, please? Our Father in heaven, Lord, we're thankful for the abundant life. We have the opportunity to live in Rutherford County. Thank you for the opportunity we have to come before you. We ask that you bless this committee and look out for the citizens of Rutherford County as we conduct the business of the county. Father, I ask that you bless all of our military personnel as they're still deployed. We ask that you be with our fire and police departments are they after, as they are after the safety and protection of the citizens of Rutherford County. We ask a special blessing on our first on our first responders as they are still deployed in the Carolinas. We ask that you be with those communities as they are faced with a disaster that's almost unimaginable. Bring our first responders home safety when their jobs are complete. We ask all of this in the name of our Father, our Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Commissioner Phillips. <coughs> they have done a lot of good over there in the Carolinas, and they are to be commended for what they've done, leaving their families to go and do that like uh, far of us, too. Also, at this time, I'm going to ask uh, Mayor Ketron to come forward, too. We have began a new committee within the, the county here with a combination of county and city, and it does affect this committee and uh, our emergency personnel within this county. And I, I ask him this evening to explain this committee a little bit in depth of what's going on so that you'll be aware of, of these situations and what, what they're doing. I think it's a, a pretty good opportunity for us, and I'm going to let him explain. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the committee, um, uh, about two weeks ago, I think, uh, it came out in the paper that uh, Mayor McFarland, Shane McFarland, and I had put together and organized a task force, uh, which the task force met like last week, Mr. Chairman. Uh, last Tuesday, and we, we had all the agencies, uh, first responding agencies that were there. Um, I think it was a very good um, meeting. Uh, as we opened the meeting was to preface by, you know, our total mission is um, being able to respond quickly uh, to our citizens and uh, work out the details, so we have uh, basically ask those agencies to uh, get together, come back with a full report to us by November 15th, I believe, was the date that we set. Uh, come back. I, I know Eagle Bowl is having, having some issues about uh, response time. I think there's some, some gaps maybe in who gets called first between agencies, etc. cetera, um, in responding, but I think everybody around the table came together as one because we're all citizens of Rutherford County and, and the goal of every agency is to respond quickly. You know, when we have uh, an emergency situation for, um, you know, a car accident, house on fire, uh, you know, someone's uh, uh, seriously injured, you know, it really doesn't matter uh, what agency responds as long as someone's there the quickest in responding so we can uh, perform whatever medical services are needed and get them transported as quickly as possible. So I think it was a very good meeting. I felt good about it. I hope you did as well, Mr. Chairman. Um, and uh, if anybody has any questions, but we should uh, have that report back to us by, like I said, November 15th. <coughs> and that, that included, that was, Laverne was represented in Smyrna, uh, the city of Smyrna, uh, as well as fire chief, we had uh, Laverne Fire Chief and their city manager. We had Eagle Bowl and their city manager. We had our own uh, Rutherford County Ambulance. Mr. Nunley was there. We had uh, Mr. Farley was there from 
Murfreesboro Fire and Murfreesboro, uh, of course, uh, Mayor McFarland and Murfreesboro Fire and Rescue. They were all there around the table. Uh, who else was there? <coughs> Randy was there. Randy was there, I think, from our department, and I believe um, our medical. Uh, Dr. Galloway. Uh, Dr. Galloway was there, who represents both City of Murfreesboro and Rutherford County. Uh, he was in attendance as well, and and um, Deputy the Mayor Sandler was also there. Any questions? Okay. Thank you very much. I just felt like it was important you, you knew this committee had met and, and what the actions were, and we'll continue to do that and keep you informed. We'll move into the meeting. We, I look for a motion for the approval of our minutes from last meeting. Mr. Chairman, uh, I've reviewed the minutes and found them in order and make a motion to approve. I have a second? Second. Motion's been made and second. Any discussion? Anyone else seen any? changes in the minutes that needs to be taken care of. If not, I'll call for the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Minutes go in as approved. Move to our first one, a juvenile detention report. Miss Duke, you've moved all the way up the list this time. Thank you. I appreciate that. <coughs> so we have um, two things tonight. I have my usual reports. And then I have an MOU at the end, I believe is how they have it in. Um, probably uh, what everybody wants to know the most about is how we are um, collecting our monies from our agencies that contract with us. And I can tell you that uh, several of the counties listed as owed have, we've received those um, checks. Usually what happens is when we print the report and when I have the meeting, um, it crosses in the mail. So those, none of those are, are anything to worry about. Even the large one from Sumner County, that's, um, that's normal monthly payment from Sumner County. <coughs> um, moving on to our STD stats. This is um, a new setup and I was thinking about it when I came in. Um, it's actually color coded and I think that it doesn't come across scanned is color coded so we may need to uh, tweak this a little bit differently. Um, I was trying to give more information uh, as far as uh, how things are breaking down but if you can't see the colors then you don't really see what's happening on it. So um, percentage of um, positives for this month is 25 percent. So. <coughs> Um, the other reports are pretty average and normal with nothing uh, that stands out to me, but I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Anybody have questions? I notice Sumner County has a, that's usual, isn't it? Yes, they, um, they're, their range is in usually it's a fifty thousand dollar month for them each month. So, um, but they they pay timely. It just crosses in the mail from when we print for the meeting and when the check comes. Any questions? Do I hear a motion to approve the report? Motion to approve. I have a motion. I have a second. Second, Mr. Mr. Irwin. Mr. Irwin. Any discussion? Uh, one one, one, one yes. quick question. Yeah. And, and oddly to direct it to Lisa. Do all the counties in the state, including Sumner, have the same uh, year end that we do in yes. July? Yes. Okay. All I the thought that might make a little difference. Municipalities and counties all have June 30th year end. I thought that might make a difference on some of these payments, so thank you. Okay. Anything else? Any other questions? If not, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. The last thing I have tonight is a memorandum of understanding with the Depart Rutherford County Department of Education, Board of Education. Um, 
you saw something very similar to this in one of our previous meetings. That MOU was for um, <clears throat> Title I funding. This is for basic education. So this is very similar, but it is um, exactly the same, but totally different. So this is um, uh, saying that juvenile detention is going to provide the basic education services for the young people, and we're going to work closely with the Board of Education. And uh, Josh McCrary and I worked back and forth with the uh, Board of Education on this, and everybody got it just like they wanted it, uh, and uh, shouldn't be any issues with it. I know you said the same as what we've had before, but I believe we've got, no, we've got two new commissioners on here and, and two others that's come from some other committees. I don't know if they have seen these before. So, uh, questions? Gentlemen? No, sir, I, I worked over at the Juvenile Court. I, I'm somewhat familiar with it on that. So I know they, they carry through with a good job. Okay. Well, do we have a motion to approve? Motion. I'll second. Second. Commissioner P. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Right, thank, thank you. you. Correctional Work Center, I believe. <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. Coke. Good evening. How are you all? Go ahead and start uh, the report with a review of our work center board meeting, uh, which was September 4th. And a couple of main topics just to bring up off of that was uh, the fact that we welcomed uh, Mayor Ketron to our board and our team. And we also welcomed uh, board member David Puckett who filled the vacancy left by Commissioner Gamlin. Big shoes. Yeah, he, he has big shoes. He does. Yeah. <laughs> 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 16 or something. <laughs> At least. <laughs> uh, we're right on schedule as far as our uh, our budget goes, we, we submitted the PO for the, uh, um, the security system that we talked about with Stanley. Um, that's going to be uh, worked on over the next few months. Um, I think they should finish up about first of the year, sometime like that. Um, one other uh, topic that we discussed, uh, Longtime employee and uh, retiree, Miss Charlotte Bullington, passed away, and uh, we recognized her. And, and um, the fact that she was, you know, she was a longtime employee of the county. And <coughs> make sure we wanted to get that out there. Um, next is our work release uh, program stats. You can look; there's no significant changes. We did pick up a new new company this past month, and uh, I believe that was Swan's Cosmetic Company. The female, uh, female inmates are going to be working there. I think we have two positions right now, and within the next few months we should have two more. Next is our yearly activity report. No significant changes there. Our population is staying about the same. I think the sheriff and I have a meeting sometime this week about uh, maybe accepting uh, a few more and bringing them over. Our monthly worker report uh, with the projected combined savings of $98,072 for the people that we're sending out to work every week. And then our state litter pickup, $1,267 brought back in to the uh, general fund. Should be it on our Any questions? I just want to make a comment and remind people once again because this continually comes up that the state, am I correct, the state sets the limits to the they do. Yes, sir. Anything else? 
anything else. Oh, y'all are easy tonight, I tell you. You're getting better. <laughs> <laughs> Move to approve the report, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion to approve. Any have a second? Second there. Any further questions? All those in favor? Aye. Can't report. Thank you. I appreciate it, sir. <coughs> Sheriff's Department. You are taking, you do see these through your SharePoint. Did you get a chance to look at all these? Or? <laughs> and you also get the uh, other reports that deal with utilities. Those you've seen those. Do I have a motion to approve the report? <coughs> motion. Second, Commissioner Gamble. Ms. Reno. Seconds. Any other discussion? Ask a quick question if you don't yes, mind, sir. Mr. Chairman. But I'm pretty sure I understand this. Postal charges are mostly spent for the year, but that's the recharge of postal machine, is that correct? That's and correct. The, they have some FedEx, some FedEx uh, and uh, things like that, and, but mainly that machine. 
reason. So, so we recharged the machine kind of right after the first, right after the first of the budget year. Last a while. I mean, we didn't have to go back last year. We so. never. Uh, it lasted us the whole year last year. We never did come back. Before. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, I had a question. What's the population on it nowadays? We're age 61 today. Uh, down a little. We've been running a pretty good average, about 868. Uh, we are running 91, between 89.9 and 91.6 percent of capacity. Uh, of course, as you well know, TCI says anything at 80 percent or over is capacity. Running right at it. If you look at it that way, one of the things if we didn't have the programs we have, we probably would have it right now. I do have one question. That is, the, what's the status on you know, doing hearings at the jail or something? We are doing uh, video hearings, uh, which we do that every morning, anywhere from 15 to 25 inmates, which that's 15 to 25 transports that we don't have to make. Uh, we are working with the circuit court judges where they are asking the Supreme Court uh, if they can do some of their hearings by video to get around. There's a word in the law that physically appear, but uh, that's old law, and so we're trying to get a ruling that if we can do some of our circuit court work by video, it's going to reduce our So uh, we've got a very active program right now where we're doing uh, first arraignment by video. From our place to the judge's chamber, uh, it's working very well. Uh, the judges have worked with us very closely, and it's proven to be very, very effective. The only ones we transport, there may be four or five out of that first arraignment that need to be transported for an attorney or so forth periods, but it, like I said, it's cut down that many transports. And we're usually doing that within an hour and a half to, to two hours. Still sitting on the mental health transports. We are it's still, history. yeah, it's uh, still very active at the Tennessee Sheriff's Association as far as trying to get the law changed, but right now we're still stuck with it. Uh, by law, as you well know, uh, we are the primary transport. And we're transporting last month was 129. We're averaging and have been up to around 150, 160. Uh, we never, we never get below 100. Got anywhere closer to transport rather than Memphis and other places? No, sir. We're still going to Memphis. That's all I got. Okay. Do you see anything down the pike that will help us reduce the population out there that we should be looking at? Or? Honestly, Commissioner, I think we're at a point now that we've got 25 programs out there. Uh, we are working uh, and trying to do something for them coming out to get jobs, and, and I think as that comes online more than what we've got, it's certainly going to help us. I don't know this is going to be great and drastic numbers. Uh, if you look back at over the last year, we've been running consistently at 91%, uh, and we have tried everything we know of to get that number down. Uh, we just went through a week with TCI. We were in conference with them and we've got a lot of information. And, uh, as bad as it sounds, we're better off than a lot of the counties right now. It's surprising, but uh, a lot of them are under mandate now, uh, by federal mandate to, to build them. And uh, that's what we're trying to prevent, is to stay below that number. But uh, with our population increasing like it is, unfortunately, there's an element that's coming with that. With the, as long as those numbers keep increasing, uh, we're going to be fighting. Anyone else? We have a motion on the table. All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Report approved. Go fire. Next. The weapon donation. Next. Weapon donation. On Barrett's firearm is donated not only, let's make this clear, it's not only to us, there's several counties in Tennessee that they've donated these rifles to. It's a Barrett Rex 7. It's going to be part of our patrol rifle inventory. It's 
spade at $16.99. And we'd like to accept it. <laughs> I need your permission. Motion to approve the acceptance of the rider. Motion made and second. And a suggestion that we send a thank you. Very definitely. I'll say that will be done. Any other discussion? All those in favor of accepting this, say aye. 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 Opposed? There is. We have one of Venture. Venture. His needs to retire. <laughs> Um, He's been a good dog, but it's time. And we went through uh, property management and requested all the proper paperwork. He will be given to his handler, Officer Ashburn, who will maintain the dog through the rest of his years. I believe all the paperwork property management is built out, so it's good to go. Okay. Let me say this. Uh, of course, you think of an eight-year-old German Shepherd uh, long life but these dogs normally after they're retired is uh, if you're at a 12 to 16 18 months that's about all they last and um, they usually are, are deceased in about a year year and a half to retirement uh, when they get to that age they're, they're past their prime i know this is called on your form there an inventory property disposal oh, form we're going to do something and I, 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 I was going to say can we come up with a different name for name yes K-9 retirement form or something of this Brown, type. Call, call it something has. else beside their own hands and we didn't know what else to do with it. So, <laughs> so I guess tonight what I'm asking for, do we have a motion for a K-9 retirement at the Sheriff's Department? <laughs> Make a motion. Senate. Second. You do. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Yeah. Find it. I believe you got what a resolution. Yes, sir. We'd like to present this uh, for consideration to go before the full commission, and it's a resolution for recognizing. I'll just read it if y'all got just a second. It says a resolution of recognition for 25 years of service by Rutherford County Sheriff's Office School Resource Officer during America Safe Schools Week, October 21 through 27. Whereas Rutherford County was the first county in Tennessee to initiate a school resource officer program in conjunction with the Rutherford County Sheriff's Office and Rutherford County Schools in the 1993-1994 academic year. <clears throat> Whereas the primary duty of school resource officers is to ensure safety for students, faculty, and staff in every Rutherford County school. Whereas school resource officers teach classes to students and counsel with students and parents. Whereas school resource officers are trusted by students in their roles at schools. Whereas school resource officers support children in athletic, academic, and extracurricular activities. Whereas America's Safe Schools Week focuses on school safety to maintain schools free of violence, weapons, and drugs. Therefore, it be resolved by the Rutherford County Mayor and County Commission that we hereby recognize and commend the Rutherford County Sheriff's School Resource Officers, especially during America's Safe Schools Week, October 21 through 27, for their commitment to ensuring safety in Rutherford County Schools. Move to approve the resolution. We have a motion to approve the resolution. Second. Second. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Definitely we want to recognize these individuals and, and what they do and how important they are to us and our schools and the students out there in the county. And we appreciate this, this recognition. They do a good, good work. Will this resolution go before the full Rutherford County Commission? On the 11th, I believe. Is it? I think it October. Okay. Thank, Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. OSHA. Good evening. You're not going to talk about 65 year olds, are you, tonight? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. But I'm getting closer. <laughs> That may be me personally, though. Um, I'd like to report that in the month of August, uh, from your reports, you'll see that we had a total of 34 injuries requiring medical attention for the month. That brings the total for the year to 169. And you notice there on the uh, side of the report, you'll notice that uh, that brings the total for the year as far as OSHA reportable, 109. Of that 109, 47 of them 
are restricted days, 24 had lost time days associated with the injury, and 38 all others. If you look at the next page of your report, you'll notice you'll see how we compare uh, this month to the same time for the two previous years, 169 compared to 142 in 2017 and 130 in 2016. The spike, spike you see in the month of August is always associated with the schools coming back into session, uh, all the schools and everything, bringing the students back, and, and we always incur a spike in the month of August. For those injuries, you'll see the next page uh, of the report. You'll see how the uh, incurred dollars, the incurred dollars for the month of August was 52,333. That brings the uh, year to date to 472 as compared to the two previous years. As you see on the next page of the report, 34 with the claim count. $52,333 incurred. The Board of Education had a total of 19 injuries for the month and they had incurred dollars of $21,980. The Highway Department month of August had three accidents requiring medical attention and they were at 4,620. Those types of accidents were <clears throat> accidents that were investigated and deemed to be in, in what type of a nature? Commensable. Uh, two of them require, uh, involved vehicles from the highway department and one of them was involving uh, an individual who was uh, doing brush uh, collection, was injured while doing brush collection. Okay. Those individuals that had accidents, refresh my memory, are they required to go through some type of um, uh, additional training to avoid potential future type of accidents? Are we doing those types of things on accident investigation? Yes, sir. Uh, when an individual receives an accident, of course, we require uh, an accident form be completed. We have uh, four pages. There is a OGI accident claim report where they identify what body parts have been injured, basically. We have an employee injury statement where the employee actually gets to tell their story of the accident. We have a supervisor form which requires the supervisor to investigate the accident, determine if and what type of corrective action needs to be addressed, and they end up stating their position. And then also we have a witness form so to make sure that we have anybody who's out there and saw the accident that they're able to provide their input also. Uh, then all those accidents, of course, when an individual uh, uh, receives medical treatment, they'll go to the attending physician that we've, they've identified that they've, from their choice. There's a requirement for a drug test, burn alcohol test, in addition to the treatment. Okay. So we cover all those bases with an injury. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, uh, I need to apologize. Uh, may I be excused about two minutes? And I'll be right back, sir. You may. Okay, thank you. School system. I think I've asked this the last several years. I keep getting the same answer. <laughs> and it just seems counterproductive to be doing the same thing. And I guess I'll maybe ask for this health and ed tomorrow night. But when I've asked about this in the past four years, it's always been well, we waxed the floors, we made the floors real slick. So when the kids come in, they slip and fall on the floors. Uh, and that's the same answer I've gotten for four years now. Uh, this is the fifth year. <laughs> uh, and we still haven't really seen anything. I mean, is there anything being done? I mean, it seems to me not really wise to keep uh, you know, if you stick your hand in the fire and you burn it, uh, and you keep, if you do that once, uh, that's called a learning experience. You keep doing that multiple times, 
that's not called a learning experience. Uh, so I just wonder, you know, I've really not seen anything, and, and like I said, maybe it's more appropriate to ask them, but since risk management is one that should be pushing them, I'm asking you, is there anything being done to kind of negate some of this repetitive injury thing? Yes, sir. In fact, uh, in the month of uh, February, March, and April each year, we have a countywide safety inspection that is being done by outside contractors rather than the county doing it themselves. We have somebody actually goes out there that, that is in fact inspecting each and every school according to OSHA standards. By the end of that time, they are giving us a safety uh, report for each county school, each county department. And we've received all those in. Once we've done that, those inspections then are disseminated back to the schools to tell them what type of things that, that they've been found as lacking under OSHA. And I just started this week following up with each and every school and start going back out to schools to determine where they are as far as the result of those inspections. Trip hazards, uh, you know, uh, lockout, tag out if that should be something, whether guarding on any type of equipment needs to be done, uh, whether they're using uh, search, search protectors properly or whether they're in uh, series, uh, those types of things, whether they've got uh, electric panels blocked, go back out and follow up on those inspections and things like that and then ensure that they're working toward resolving those issues that they have open. <coughs> and then, of course, the last thing is, again, by the time we get, again, they've been out for the summer, get back, try and get those things resolved, uh, work on them, and then, of course, we'll start the process all over again the first of the year. So we are doing that to try and uh, stem, you know, accidents that continue to occur. A lot of things like trip hazards and things like that that you see. Uh, unfortunately, some of the other things that happen, the student-related injuries and things like that, things that actually happen in the classroom when a teacher or somebody trips over something that's in the class, uh, you know, those are things that happen that you don't get to catch through an inspection or something, and we'll just continually work on those. Uh, as I was speaking, I, I spoke about the highway department and their, their vehicles injury. Uh, the next page of the report where I left off, I believe, is with the county general. The county general had 12 injuries requiring medical attention. Uh, the total incurred dollars there was $25,733. And the last page of your report, you'll notice in the county general, we've broken that down by the departments, and you'll see the three, or excuse me, the four different departments for those 12 injuries there listed on your report. Okay, any further questions? Move to approve the report, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion been made and second. <coughs> Got a question? Just all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I did want to bring up one additional thing, sir, if I may. Uh, risk management uh, also involves more than just the OSHA, it's also the health insurance side of the county, you know, for all county employees. Um, right now, at the end of the month, all county employees who does have the county health insurance, they need to be completing their bio, bio screening and their wellness assessment. Uh, they had gone out on that and the end of September is where that happened. So, if we have any county employees listening that has not completed their uh, bio screening and the wellness assessment, then they need to do that. And obviously, too, if their spouse is covered under the health, county health insurance, they're required to complete that also. Uh, that can be a big savings for them if they uh, complete that screening. They can save on their health insurance coverage. Also, the month of October, we have the wellness fair that's coming out in October. Employees should be receiving information about the wellness fair. And we have open enrollment coming up in the month of October that will start before this uh, committee meets again, but will end after the committee. So I just want to make sure people be looking for uh, the uh, open enrollment information. Also, because this year we're going to be doing a new uh, website for that open enrollment, employees are required to go in and register at the site 
prior to doing open enrollment. They should have gotten something in the mail on this. Just uh, like to remind all the county employees to do that. It will save them a lot of time and uh, set up time to, in order to get that done if they do it now before open enrollment starts. So just like to remind all the county employees of that, sir. Time again. Do, do you know when the wellness fair will be? Do you have I believe it's off. I don't have my calendar for October the 12th, sir, but I'm not sure. Okay. I know that there was an email that went out on that just yesterday, though, or well, I guess today, Monday, just today. So I just want to say that, that it's out there. Okay. Good deal. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Ambulance service report. Mr. Nunnick. Ready? Before you get started, I just want to say your group that come to Higgable this weekend for their festival is very much appreciated. And uh, uh, it, it meant a whole lot, I think, to the county for what they did and for being seen down there and the, the abilities they have there. Uh, I learned a whole lot about what else the ambulance uh, service is doing. Uh, I took the opportunity to go sit in the bus and cool off because it's air conditioned. And, uh, but to see that and learn more, I don't know how many of you know it or not, but we have a uh, trail bike team that, that works this county in different events and things like that that are, I believe they're going to uh, what a, a national expo to be seen at. And so. Uh, Doing a lot of things. Just want to say thank you for what, what y'all did down there. Thank you. We made 2,896 calls in the month of August. Our average response time was 7.0 minutes. We had 50 coroner's calls, and 24 of those went for autopsies. We billed one million six hundred and eleven thousand seventy two dollars and collected seven hundred and fifty five thousand seven hundred and fifty. Puts us on a projected yearly collection of eight million two hundred and sixty eight thousand. We had insurance write offs of five hundred and forty one thousand four hundred and eighty six dollars and collection agency write offs of three hundred and twenty four thousand two hundred and eighty seven dollars. The table at the bottom of the first page is uh, concerns the ambulances. The ones that are highlighted in yellow are the reserve ambulances. At the bottom of each one of those columns, we drove a total of 52,074 miles. And the maintenance costs and the fuel costs listed for each one of them and the totals for all of them. Essentially, it comes out to 45 cents per mile on right now. The next page is a summary of what our special teams have been doing. We had uh, six ten services and various trainings, pedal medics, uh, work coverage at the MTSU football games. The top team is a uh, Paramedics who work with the sheriff's departments. The REACT team is actually the, the team that goes and visits schools and does various community activities. They did 18 different things this past month. And the special operations team has several things listed there, but on the next page, You'll see a, a detailed report of what they have been doing as the various activities of that team. For a total of 140 calls. In August, uh, on August 15th, actually, we had a, a little luncheon type thing in Laverne. We reunited the, some people who had suffered cardiac arrest <coughs> and were resuscitated, and we re, reunited them with the people who actually worked with them. Uh, very touching ceremony. So he, he 
you can see that there. We called it the Frontline Lifesaver Survivor Recognition Act, but it was all about uh, giving recognition to those people who had suffered cardiac arrest and were able to come to this. There was 11 of them during the past year. Uh, the American Heart Association found out we were doing that. And, they wanted to become a part of it, and they did have a, have a table there. Uh, but they also wanted us to come and talk with their group because we had several statistics that they didn't have. So that's the report for the month of August. Motion to approve the report. And motion to approve. Motion to Second. Second. Mm -hmm. Urban. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor of the motion to approve the report? Say aye. 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 Thank you. Motion carries. I think I need to call that. I think I need to call that. No. No, I think you can do that. I think you can do that. Sometimes I do. Fire and rescue. I understand you've been out all morning. It is. It's about 4.30 this morning. We've been running all day long. Uh, just want to kind of give you an update. Our, we sent a team with uh, uh, Rough County Fire Rescue, Murfreesboro Fire Department, and Woods County Fire Department. We sent a water rescue team to South Carolina. And they've been hopefully be back tomorrow. They've been gone about a week and a half. They've been very busy, uh, a lot of flooding in South Carolina. They've made a lot of uh, rescues, evacuated a lot of people. They've uh, re rescued a lot of animals, a lot of dogs. So they've been very busy, and I think it's been a very rewarding uh, time for them and also an uh, experience that uh, provides the kind of training that you just can't, can't pay for. It. It's, it's been, a, uh, I don't think it'll come back a lot more experience and knowledge and stuff. And, and, uh, we're, we're proud of them, and I, I look forward to be back here hopefully the more evening. Um, well, one thing we did today is uh, Chief Lowry with the Sheriff's Department, more folks with the Mark Fire Department, myself, gave blood to the Red Cross. A lot of people want to know what they can do to help these people in South Carolina, and, and they had to shut down about over 5,000 uh, blood donation events in South Carolina. So. If you want to help people in South Carolina, donate blood. They, they, they're in big demand for that right now. For the month of August, uh, we had a total of 430 calls. We had uh, four structure fires, uh, three vehicle fires, 235 of medical calls, 24 motor vehicle accidents with injuries, 23 without injuries, and three extrications. Year to date for Rutherford County Fire Rescue, <clears throat> we have a total of 3,413 calls. That consists of uh, 40 structure fires, um, 1,820 medical calls, 183 uh, motor vehicle accidents with injuries, 197 motor vehicle, in, uh, motor vehicle accidents without injuries, and 16 uh, total extrications. Year to date for all the other uh, volunteer fire pumps in the county, it shows their year to date totals at, at the end. But uh, we've had 83 structure fires, 118 brush fires, uh, 58 vehicle fires, 765 MBAs. Uh, 31 of those were uh, extrications. We've had uh, for that total county total is 4,397 calls. And out there it shows what the training hours they provided at the end of the uh, department of total. Next sheet is what I submit to the Rutherford County Coast Department every year, every month, excuse me, every month, showing what structures in the county were damaged that will possibly require to, uh, to obtain a permit for reconstruction. The uh, next page is uh, our Fire investigation unit, the report shows the three fires they uh, investigated and the determination on that. And the if last month uh, we have new people on the 
public safety, but the Alma Road uh, was an incendiary fire. It was set. It was our fire, and uh, we didn't make it to arrest on that. Uh, after our fire investigator got on the scene and, and determined it was arson, there was a witness that noticed the car that was, that was on the scene, give a description, and while a Laverne police officer was working a domestic, noticed the truck in the driveway next door and and started uh, interviewing them and, and made an arrest and an arson. So that's where law enforcement and fire come together and had a positive outcome on that. Uh, because of the new public safety, we've got some new people that's new to the commission. This next sheet is just a, a list of our capabilities that I want you all to, be, to uh, know what we were doing and how far we've advanced since 2010. We provide uh, fire suppression, vehicle rescue, education, uh, advanced medical life support. We have paramedics and advanced EMTs on the trucks. A hazardous materials response. Of course, we have a swift water and flow response, which that's uh, being utilized in South Carolina. We have a fire divisions, uh, fire investigations divisions. We have three nationally certified fire investigators. We have fire codes and for enforcement. We review all the plots and plans, reviews for the new commercial construction, and we have five fire inspectors on the department. So, making a lot of progress and, and trying to provide a lot more. Um, capabilities of two citizens of this county, and that concludes my report. And I have some budget amendments. Any questions on the report? If not, I'll call for a motion to approve the report. Motion to approve. Commissioner Gorley. Second. Commissioner Garner. All those in favor? Yeah. Uh, motion carries. I believe you've got an amendment. Yeah, the first amendment is a, uh, we received a $1.7 million grant for, to hire 15 firefighters. This is a total, a three year grant. Um, it's uh, pays 75% of their salaries for the first two years and 35%, I believe, for the third year. And the budget amendment you see right there uh, is, uh, for I, I was assume for this this fiscal year. Well, it just starts uh, December first. And this is the uh, from my unassigned fund balance to uh, wages and salaries, um, Social Security, pensions, employee and department dependent insurance, disability insurance, and employee Medicare. And I assume you probably want to go over these separately. Is that the way we should do them? Yeah, yes. Okay. Any questions on that First Amendment? The, the grants uh, for three years, and after that, we're on our own. After the, after the grant is uh, complete, then the county will incur the cost of the full 15. So, so no chance of reapplying for an additional grant? We can always apply, but, but when you apply, you have to hire new people. Okay. Okay, so, you know, so so we can't reapply for a grant to continue this particular program. So after three years, we're on our own. Well, I mean, you probably could, but uh, it, it won't be for the same fifteen. That is the same. So, so the simple answer is no. No. Okay, <laughs> and, and and one of the things that you stipulate too when you accept the grant, the mayor will accept this when he when he, we've got them on hold because of that is that we make a promise that during the grant period we will not lay off any firefighters and which i don't think that would be something we want to do anyway and of course after the three year is up the county is no is not obligated to carry on that's a, a kind of a cool way of us getting into a, a program but the chances of us eliminating that program after three years are very slim uh, so it'll be an additional budget item at the end of that three years i'm for it Okay, but just so kind of everyone knows that uh, it's pretty cool to get the grant, but at the end of that period of time, we'll be carrying an additional budget <coughs> item. And once again, I think that's cool. Uh, well, I think that, uh, you know, I think everybody understands that the county continues to grow. The sheriff's Office, and the service, and even fire service is going to have to increase. We're just trying to do what we can to e help ease that financial burden on, on the startup cost. Commissioner Phillips is exactly right. Uh, we don't want to make the public uh, believe we're trying to pull something or anything. We, uh, 
we will incur this as a budget item uh, in three years. And, uh, but in three years, at the rate we're growing, we're going to have a lot more population and uh, our, our needs are going to be much greater. We've seen in four years that I've, only four years I've been on the commission, I've seen the call volume increase dramatically. And I think everyone else that's been on this committee has also. Uh, uh, and I don't see that <coughs> getting up any, uh, both in terms of fire, EMS. Uh, uh, I think it's great that we get more and more cooperation between EMS and fire and law because we've got to look at it uh, uh, as a total, in a total picture. Each has their unique discipline and each unique uh, responsibility. But a lot of the uh, capability and so on is also shared. Where you have one, you have to have the other. And, uh, the, uh, so uh, I'm for this. And, uh, uh, I just want to make sure the public understands that, yes, we're taking advantage of uh, a large, significant grant, but we will be uh, forced to uh, pay for this at the end of that three-year period, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll be in a position to do that. Mr. Chair. Mayor. Mr. Chairman, I, <coughs> I, I agree. I'm, uh, I like Commissioner Phillips, I, I agree with this. Uh, I think it's good for our county uh, as we continue to grow. However, I did uh, have this discussion with Chief Farley. I want the members to understand exactly where we're going with this because these are level one firefighters in the grant. They're not, so that's that's paying just for to come in and get trained. I want to make sure that you understood that this is everything over a three-year period and then we accept it all uh, now he, he once he brings in these level one he'll have to escalate other firefighters up to other higher ranks which will be an addition am I correct mm -hmm. be an addition to the budget um, that's not in the in this grant and be prepared at the end of three years that we're going to have to have another facility to, to house these numbers. So that'll be in addition to on top then three years. So just I, I want everybody to totally understand. Go at the end of three years. Go. Oh, we didn't we didn't know about that. I just want complete transparency as we enter into this, and the full commission totally understands it. And. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that'll be your job to explain that to the full commission. <laughs> uh, well, basically, what we, we we bring the 15 firefighters on in February, and it was, we I've got CTAS doing a study of where they think the best possible location based on call volume, population, and all that where the next session should be. Right. Uh, then, of course, we'll come back hopefully next this coming budget year, make a proposal on where that where that should be. Commission approves that, then we'll move we'll another station. When that happens, when that station is completed, we will we will promote uh, from our ranks now. We'll promote another captain, two lieutenants, three engineers, and that department, that that same station will have 65 firefighters. So you you actually have three uh, staff stations. And one of the reasons I think that's very important is this a, a very example this morning on Capitol Pike. Uh, structure fire and because of the volunteer ranks aren't what they used to be we had um, it was an Amble district we had Amble, Las Casas, Kittle, uh Station 51 and 52 out there. I held 51 which is Barfield in the middle of the town because uh, you, I just didn't want to put everything out there. I called Wima for an engine, I called uh, Laverne for an engine and got those. Well, about 15 minutes after I told 51 to stand in the town, we had a, a MBA with entrapment on Midland Road. And they were, and of course, everything in the county was out there except for Barfield. The agent responded, did the, made the patient care entrapment and helped transport that patient. Well, what units did we have out there again? You had, at, at Gospel, you had uh, Alma, which is their location. You had Las Casas, you had Kittrell, we had Christ, uh, four or five fires from Christiana. 
Uh, I had, uh, they were calling for more manpower, so I called the burn for an engine company. I called Wilson County for an engine company. Well, what, what I was asking, you held back, come what, Company 51? At a Barfield Station. Right, which I think was excellent. I'm not second guessing you. I'm just wondering why did we not have another truck we could respond? Is that where we've sent these swift water people into Carolina? What do you mean when we have another truck? I mean, I, I, uh, 52 is Walk Hill. They were on the scene. Okay. okay 52 that's... is a full staff station. Walk Hill, they were on the scene. Everything was out there except for uh, Fossville and uh, Barfield Station. And because of the availability of something else happened, I kept Barfield in the middle of town, which would be around the MAC. Barfield's 51. 51. I'm going to have to get used yeah, to I'm sorry. I'm, so I'm talking fire talk. But anyway, the Barfield Fire Station, I said, y'all go roadside. And, and basically, what they, they get in the center of town. That way, if anything happens, they they're, they're ready to go. They're responding to it. So they were up there at that time, sitting in the truck, waiting to be dispatched. But you did have a unit 52. That 52 was, was, uh, okay. was walked to a truck. Those four guys were there. Uh, when at 7 o'clock, we, we, we started at 4 o'clock to 4.30. They, I think they finally cleared the scene at 10 30 this morning. They were out there about five hours. When uh, by the time I got out there, most of the guys had been fighting fire were just wore out. At seven o'clock I brought my C shift guys out there to swap with B shift and sent them home. Uh, so we, we didn't have we have probably about a, maybe an hour, hour overtime. When you're fully staffed, nobody out on vacation or Kelly Days or whatever, how many units can you respond? Two units, and uh, I got four four personnel at Barfield and four personnel at uh, Warfield full time. And that's four people per uh, apparatus mm -hmm. that's required by Post. So you set three. You set three units. I had a total that you can't respond at any given time. Well, it, it, with this new station, it gives us three units. Without three stations, that would be fully staffed. You're talking about in the future? Yes, sir. Right now, you don't. Right now, I've only got two. I'm just trying to ascertain how many we've got yeah. right now. We've just got two full-time stations at Walk Hill and Barfield. Okay. This, this 51, 15, 52. Yes, sir. Okay. This, uh, this new station, to be determined, will, will provide a third station in the county. Okay. I saw the pictures of that car. I was just by that house last night. It, it, I was out visiting someone just around the corner from where this fire occurred and uh, was by that house. It's a very narrow road. I would assume since uh, I don't think CUD furnishes water for that. that no, we had water pressure is almost non-existent uh, or pump dry real quick. Uh, it, it was a very difficult, uh, it was a hot fire. Poor road conditions and poor water supply. <coughs> that would be my assumption. Yeah, we had to, we had shuttle water. And we had three tankers out there shuttling water. And uh, you know, I think we're two fire stations down from where we ought to be right now, and about four ambulance stations down from where we ought to be right now. Uh, so I think we're going to have to get moving. Something we need to remember too: the grants like this is put us where we are now. Uh, that, that's what's moved us to the positions that we're able to do what we can do at this point. And uh, that's where we're working with this too, where we can go further and see what we've got. Uh, yes, Mayor, I'm ready to defend and present this before the, before the commission because uh, we're not gonna slow down in the growth. And we've got people that are, that are depending on something to be done out there and it's too late when something does happen. And, uh, you, you know, we, uh, I'm also in planning. And when you're over there planning, you keep waiting on this hundred, you know, the hundred year flood. I always look for the hundred year fire too. And, uh, or in the sheriff's, the hundred year accident or whatever. You know, we got to plan for those things that are coming out there. And I think by doing grants like this, it allows us to move in those positions in a way that's not overtaxing, and that's just using a word in a, in a different way. But I think it does give us that opportunity. Also, Miss Lily Snowden was kind enough to be here tonight. 
uh, Mayor Kedger wanted to make sure that you all had a full understanding of what the cost was going to be, what what this covers, and, she, and, and of course the side of tax covered it, so she has all that information if you want to share it with you. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve and forward the budget. Second. Motion. Second. Motion made. Approve and forward the budget. Ask you to call the roll. Commissioner Irvin? Yes. Commissioner Gammon? Yes. Commissioner Gurley? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Phillips? Aye. Commissioner Serrano? Yes. Chairman Reed? Yes. Okay. The next grant was for 40 sets of, of uh, Person protective or turnout in what we call turnout here. Uh, the grant was $129,000, and uh, the county has provided $11,814. 11, Move to approve for the budget. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Any discussion? Commissioner Irvin? Aye. Commissioner Gammon? Yes. Commissioner Gurley? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Phillips? Aye. Commissioner Serrano? Yes. Chairman Reed? Yes. The next budget is a fire prevention grant uh, for uh, $118,000. $5,619 will be the county sh shared part of it. This is for smoke alarms to low income and dis dis disabled citizens of Rutherford County. Uh, what we will do, we'll have a target session day where we come in and be working with conjunction with the state fire marshal's office and we will target these low income areas, go door to door and, and, and ask to put these uh, smoke alarms in their houses. One of the good things that I'm proud of is we also have what we call, what I call bed shakers for people who are deaf and hard of hearing. It's a device we go in and we hook it up to their bed, it's laid up under their pillow and because they can't hear, when smoke is detected, it shakes their pillow wakes him up and uh, that I'm very excited about having that used to have those same things in some hotel rooms move to approve forward budget you should <laughs> no, I hear a second uh, the next item we is, need to vote on that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you get ahead of yourself. I'm going to jump over the comment. <laughs> Call the roll. Commissioner Irvin? Aye. Commissioner Gammon? Yes. Commissioner Phillips? <coughs> yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Phillips? Aye. Commissioner Serrano? Yes. Chairman Reed? Yes. Okay, Chief. Next budget item is uh, I want to move $5,000 out of my vehicle maintenance uh, line item into data, uh, data processing for a uh, vehicle maintenance and uh, tracking software. It will be able to help us track our parts, materials, <coughs> everything we use for our, our vehicle maintenance and also as the guys do check offs every morning. If there's something wrong with that truck, they just check it on that software. It automatically sends an email to our captain and also to our, our maintenance person. If that, if that vehicle needs to be looked at. Any questions? And that's going to be my budget. Do I hear a motion? Call the roll. Commissioner Irvin? Aye. Commissioner Gammon? Yes. Commissioner Gurley? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Phillips? Aye. Commissioner Serrano? Yes. Chairman Reed? Yes. And again, I want to thank the commission uh, again for support. Appreciate your support tonight. I want to thank you for the past of uh, buying the new apparatus we bought and also the tankers because in times like this morning where you have a, a fire that's out in the north end of the county and you have to show the water a mile from a fire hydrant, those hydrants come in very handy and keep a continuous water supply at, at the operation of the fire. Mr. Chairman, I, I can remember, is it eight years ago, Larry, ten years ago, we didn't even have a fire department. Uh, everything, everything was pretty much volunteer. Matt Burgess created the county fire department in 2010, 2014, we got the first grant hire uh, full-time staff at Barfield and then uh, the next year is after I think it was two or three years we put uh, four guys in, at the daytime at the Walter station we applied for the grant didn't get it and then members gave me eight, 
eight more people to make that a full-time staff. It's a, a, a long way and a relatively short period of time, but still a long, long way to go. These type of, of, of uh, increased budgets in the future uh, is, is going to benefit the citizens of the county uh, yeah. and, and, and help us as we continue to grow. Uh, Mr. Mayor, at the Regional Planning Commission today, uh, we approved over 135 uh, final plats and over 250 preliminary plats. So that's how fast this county is growing, and it's 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 almost alarming. We were Steve, we were back to kind of where we were <clears throat> 10 years ago. It's a it's amazing, and there's just no slowdown in, in sight. Well, and just a little uh, clarification: in 2010, countywide, there was 1,300 calls that year. Last year, we ran close to 6,000 calls. Now, granted, some of those are medical calls. Yeah. But I mean, the guys, the guys are busy. Uh, we got things going on without. They're not sitting there waiting, pulling their thumbs. They're doing stuff. They're out helping people. And two, the the four tankers that we purchased in the last um, four or five years uh, that we bought also has allowed Rural County Fire Rescue to go through ISO. We could have got where class five. We could have got class four, but we did the water show. And what that does, ISO gives us credit for being able to supply enough water on the scene for continuous operation. So everybody in our, in, that's in the Rutherford County zone that we respond to for the county, not the volunteers, it's a class ISO rating of five. That's without a hydrant. That means that it doesn't matter if they with a hydrant or not, they get that class five rating. That's affected, me, uh, and I think I, I brought that up, millions of, of dollars of savings of homeowners insurance. Um, because we proved those tankers we can keep a, a water supply. It's like having a hydrant there as long as that home is within five miles of that station. So that's a, that's a big cost savings, and I think that's a return on our investment on those things. Part of so, the ISO ratings in the other volunteer <coughs> districts. Uh, Kid was a five. Last Cast is a five. Um, I think they're all fives except for uh, Christian is a six, and I think even Fossil brought theirs down to a five. We got eight, nine tails left. The Eagle one. Eagle one. So, I mean, that's, that, and that's a, a credit to the commission for buying this apparatus, buying these tankers, supporting the fire service. And of course, it also benefits each volunteer fire department when they, when they do their ISO audit and they know there's a full-time station coming to them because that's a guaranteed response. So that, that benefits the volunteers in their area. Although they're volunteer, they still got that, that benefit of having that, that station respond. I'd like to also point out that Chief Farley is part of that planning process too. He, reviews and signs off on plats uh, to make sure that they meet safety <coughs> requirements so we can get trucks in and out of the new subdivisions and uh, fire hydrants can be approved and if they can't be then uh, we have to go another route which are usually a sprinkler system so he's part of that process too and actively involved in that whole planning process. One of the things I'm proud of is when we have people come in and want to discuss a commercial property they meet with me, Doug DeMossi, Mike Hughes and Tanya Bell that, that way when they leave there, they know all the information they need to know about building codes, fire codes, uh, the uh, fire trucks being able to get out, and they, we give them a, just a committee meeting that they know exactly what they need to do to help them build what they want to build. A, and a, a kind of a story, this is years ago, we would have the, as the crow flies, you remember that, Steve, all those discussions we had as the crow flies and we fi finally had it as the truck drives. The crow flies of the truck drives. We're trying to figure out how close we had to be to a fire hydrant and we always use the term as the crow flies. Uh, and he did away with that pretty quick and said, mm -hmm. I don't care where the crow goes, I want to know where my truck can go. And yeah. but, but we went we did away with that and did as the truck drive instead of the crow flies and uh, it, it's a once again just a step forward in us getting into the 21st century, I guess. Well, you could have two streets and a hydrant bill here, but you couldn't drive through that yard, so you had to drive, by the time you drove around, there's a lot further than a thousand feet, so we got that cleared out where that, and of course, CED is making a vast uh, uh, expansions in the county land water line, and every time they lay a new water line, there's a fire hydrant placed a thousand feet apart, so they're, they're doing their part too, and we've got to do a partnership with them. So things are really looking up for us again. Okay. Thanks a lot, Chief. Thank you. All right. Probation recovery.
Mr. King. Are y'all doing? Okay. All right. I'll wait for you to tell us. Well, depends on which department you want to know about first. <laughs> we'll start with Recovery Corps Department first. Okay. So as you'll see in our report, I give you some statistics uh, for the four court programs uh, that we monitor and house: the Drug Court, DUI, Veterans, and Mental Health. Uh, as you'll see in the numbers, we're pretty busy. Uh, veterans, we need to bring up a little bit. But that's really dependent upon how many veterans we have in our jails or in our work center. Uh, but in drug court, we're right at currently, at the end of August, we have 53 participants. Um, as you will see, their drug of choice, approximately 46% of all of our drug court um, folks are either addicted to heroin or opiates. So it is alive and well. Um, I think Mr. Nunley, if he was here, tell you that uh, the Narcan doses keep going up month after month. So the epidemic is still alive here. Um, the number of overdose deaths are, are rampant. Um, DUI, we're currently at 42. Uh, veterans, we have 12. Mental health is really our biggest one that grows by numbers. And we're right at 29 at the end of, of August. Uh, the drug choice varies. Really, it's mainly alcohol, uh, marijuana. Not very much opiates in our mental health court. That's what the others. On board you on the statistics. Okay. What are you seeing in the success in the mental? In our mental health program, a lot of times, and it, and it sounds almost really kind of elementary in, in a way, but it's giving them a place to go. It's showing that someone cares. It's um, helping them understand the importance of their medication management, getting them medicated, um, giving them something outside of of a parent or a loved one telling them they need to do this, they must do this, and we show them why. Uh, I think we're the first court in the state, and probably in the country in mental health related, where we actually have a full-time licensed occupational therapist that we were able to hire as a case manager, which I still can't believe we did it, uh, from Belmont. So having that, working with sensory type of objects, um, showing the importance that they can go out to work, that there are things that they can do to better themselves. They just don't have to sit at home and, and uh, live on disability, that there's things that they can do. And it shows them, it gives them life. And I think that's been our biggest uh, accomplishment uh, to date. But when we looked at it initially when we came in with Mental Health Corps, we were saying, you know, the success ratio is how many times are these people going to go to jail in a year? So if we can reduce the number and cut it in half, and we've succeeded and we've kept the, the calls down for the sheriff's office, and I believe last year we only we only terminated six out of the total, you know, and that's roughly 78 percent success. So I think that's pretty that's pretty phenomenal. I think when we started, we were looking at if we could be 40 percent successful. We we've, we've done a lot, uh, but I think that's been the biggest the biggest accomplishment we've made so far. That's all I have for that, that report. Um, and probation in the other department, it's a little bit different. Um, it's more of a numbers game. At any given point, we have anywhere from three to 4,600 people on probation at any, at any given time. Um, it just really depends on the crime rate, um, schools in session, MTSU is not, um, and the like. But for the total month of August, um, our expenditures at the department was 117,761.55. The total collections that um, the clerk was able to collect at that point for August was 48,539.64. For those that have been around for a while, our numbers have decreased a little bit as far as the collection ratio. And a lot of that has to do with a lawsuit uh, that was filed between the PCC and the county. Uh, part of that, we are no longer um, allowed to, to really push the collections of, of those funds. And as you see toward the bottom, the total amount of money that we put on a voluntary payment agreement in August was 22373 So these are for the individuals that could not pay during their term of probation. And this is the money that's gone to a payment agreement with the clerk. As you will see with the VPAs for fiscal year 2019 to date, we've had 40, almost 43000 um, that is owed to the department. The failed to enter a VPA means that once a defendant is 
has completed probation and their term has expired, if, the, if that defendant has not gone to the clerk to set up a payment agreement and the clerk has not caught that, that's just lost revenue. And that's 41476 that we've lost here today. And just kind of give you an idea of, of that number. Um, this is kind of surprising. So since January the 1st of this year, uh, we have placed $219,724.12 onto a payment agreement for this county. And those are funds that are owed to the probation department. Those that have walked out and not paid the clerk is $199,495.59 that failed to get onto a payment agreement. And I want to work with Josh McCreary to see if there's not a way that we can go back and add that in civilly so that we can collect that money. I mean, that's just revenue out there that we should be able to collect. That's money that's owed to this county. And I think that, you know, it's a receivable that we should go after. It's a tough spot to be in um, after the lawsuit to how much we can collect and what we can't and those numbers. But that's $200,000 that's due to this department that I just can't turn a blind eye to and not collect. Can I get some clarification when yes. you're saying that it wasn't collected? Is it because of the lawsuit or is it because it just wasn't collected? Once a probationer, so say that you were on probation for 11 months, 29 days. At the 11 month, 29th day, if you have not paid your entire probation fees or your court cost, the judge orders you to go to the clerk's office to set up a payment agreement. And at that point, it becomes civil. If that defendant does not show up to make that payment agreement, there's nothing that the court can do. The court loses jurisdiction after that point, so now it becomes a civil liability. And that's where this 200000 just for probation. There are millions of dollars that's related to court cost that's not being collected. So it's the responsibility of the subject yes, sir. to initiate that and nobody else. Correct. He gets back similar to what the, what the ambulance service and the the right officer failure to collect on the insurance and that type of thing. We see only a 70% or so collection right there. Because a lot of these people, and what we're up against, if I'm correct, is that the court rulings as of late have said we can't really push these people to get this. It should, should, in terms of a, from a criminal standpoint, we can't pursue a criminal uh, 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 action against them so we can only go civil so it's like people with credit card debt or anything else you can only collect depends on if they're gonna you know if they're buying food for their kids or whatever versus paying this you know what they're gonna put it to and so it gets back to between, kind of between a rock and a hard spot so to speak yes. the question is also do we spend more collecting it than we do than what it's worth? Right now, the clerk's office is the only one that's allowed to collect that um, on behalf of the county. So we haven't even looked at other means or ways to, to try to do that. Yeah. The ambulance service went to a collection agency and that improved it some, but I think they determined that, you know, pursuing court action is more costly than writing it off. But I would just like to go after that 200000 and at least put it back on a payment plan. Um, What's the recidivism of these people? I think that varies. Uh, I haven't ran the numbers in a while, Commissioner, um, but it's 40% recidivate. So we will see. So if, yeah. Is there a possibility if they got rearrested and they come in, uh, they have cash on them, there'd be a way to take a percentage of that cash as they got booked in and booked out? Um, we can look at that kind of uh, if we have a, uh, a judgment issued against them, we would be. But as far as us being able to reach in and grab that, I'm not sure if that I have to give Mr. McCreary. Anything else? And I do have one budget amendment. Okay. Mr. Let's, Chairman. Let's uh, this is a good budget amendment. This is recognizing revenue. Let's get your report. Okay. I'm ready to Move to approve the report, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Phillips approves it. Second. Shantley. All those in favor of approving the report? Aye. 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 Motion carries. I believe you have the amendment. Yes, sir. And this is just uh, to show to uh, request our revenue to recognize it as a pass-through from the um, from the state of Tennessee. 
Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services, where they were able to request a grant on our behalf for our Veterans Treatment Court. This is to recognize $102,100 uh, from them, and it, and it appropriates it in specific line items. And it's mainly for two staff members, uh, as well as training. And I will say on our Veterans Court, as well as our mental health and even our drug court, we are receiving the recognition from the state. Um, they are looking at our veterans courts and our mental health courts as model courts for the entire state. We have Blount County's veterans court as well as Hamilton County veterans court coming in in October to observe our process to see if there's a way that they can mimic and um, recreate what we have created here. So I think so for me that's a very good standpoint. The state can come in and say, you know, Rutherford County is leading its way in that way. We want these other courts to come in and kind of hear that. And if you haven't attended any of the graduations, you, uh, I invite you to do so because it's something to see, to hear the stories that, that are presented at those court graduations. Very good. Do we have a graduation soon? I believe we'll have one in October. I'm not sure on our veterans. I can get back with you on that. I can let everybody know. Question or a motion on this amendment? Motion, motion accepted. Second, then. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner P made the motion. Second. Commissioner Gammon. Call the roll. Commissioner Irvin. Aye. Commissioner Gammon. Aye. Commissioner Gurley. Yes. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Phillips. Aye. Commissioner Sereno. Yes. Chairman Reed. Yes. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. I hope everybody comes out to MTSU for the ball game. The blackout. Blackout. We need you to blackout. We need the sport. That's right. Don't lame Kiffin to go back home. <laughs> Give him a full cap to the last. Okay, sir. Talking about MCSU, and here I am in my Alabama hat, so please forgive me. <laughs> uh, I won't bore you with all these statistics. I'll just kind of hit the highlights on, on some of the major points of where we're succeeding in the department. Uh, for the month of August, we had 643 animals come into the shelter. Uh, if you'll look down towards the bottom of that first page, you'll see adoption reclaim percentage for our dogs, cats, and others. Our overall percentage was 79.1%. Our euthanasia rate was 7.4% for the month. When you factor in uh, animals that were released through our TNR program and our cats, you, and the number that I like to look at is that live release rate. We had 90.9% .9 of our dogs, 89% of our cats, and overall 89.5% of our animals go back out the front door versus the back door. Uh, 130 animals that were reclaimed during the month were from our free surgery programs that we offer to Rutherford County citizens, and 62 cats were released with our trap and release program. Uh, we had over 3,000 people come into the shelter looking for a lost or new pet, and we had over 2,700 calls and voicemails for the month. Uh, 2,025 2 calls were received, 2,062 calls were completed, and we traveled almost 13,000 miles for the month. Year to date, we've had 1,249 animals. Our live release rate was 89.8%. Our goal is to continue to get that back to the 90%. To the uh, we've had a lot of bites come in over the last couple of months that have, that have changed that number a little bit. Uh, since July the 1st, we've had almost 6,200 people visit and almost 5,500 calls. And we've traveled a little over 25,000 miles. The uh, next report, uh, I think it's listed separately uh, system there are, is the rabies and bite exposure report. Our monthly, our activity report goes by fiscal year. The rabies exposure and bite report goes by calendar year. That's how it's reported to the state. Uh, for August, we had 41 bites that were reported. One of those animals was tested and did not come back as positive. And we had 14 other exposures. One of those tested did not come back positive as well. Uh, the last time that we had a positive uh, in the county was back in February. Still got my rock mail skunk. Yep, still do. It'll, it'll rotate off on January 1. Any questions for Mr. Gregory? If not, I'll look for a motion to approve his report. Also move for approval. Second for Mr. Newton. favor of the motion to approve the report. Aye. Aye. 
I welcome you all as new commissioners to come by the shelter, set up a time if you have to come down and talk about some of the programs we're doing. Some of y'all have been off the committee for a little bit, same uh, invites you would like for you to come down and, uh, and we'll sit down and talk. Thank you all. Mr. Chairman, I, I toured the facility back in August, I guess it was. Uh, maybe in August. July or early August. Yeah, early August. Yeah, yeah. Early August and very, very impressed. Uh, matter of fact, this facility smelled better than my own private veterinarian. <laughs> you know, usually you go into a vet and it just has an odor. And even back where the kennels were, I, I was very impressed with uh, the cleanliness, the lack of smell. Uh, it's, a, it's a tough business to be in, especially when everybody thinks that, you know, the letter I got today was complaining that we didn't have enough small dogs. You know, for them, they, they want to come adopt a small dog, and they, they think that he's adopting them out before they even post it online. I, I don't know what people think, but doing a good job down there. Please go by and, and just take a tour. Thank you. Just as Mr. Gregory said there, I, I urge all of you, in any of these departments right here, you want to know more about them, contact the, the heads of all the departments and go by and visit with them because I've never been turned down by any of them to allow me to come in and see what they're doing, what's going on, because uh, it, it really helps to know what's what's happening there and what's going on. Uh, I know uh, Commissioner Gammon there, he knows what's going on down. He knows a little bit of what's happening down there at the uh, uh, the jail and the areas down that way, but uh, I think if you go and take a look at Paul's and see what's happening down there, the ambulance service, sort and, and places like that i think it gives you an opportunity to see what's what's really happening so uh, i encourage you to do that all right emergency management hey how you do it uh just to in the interest of time uh just let y'all know i won't go through every single thing we did over the past month the big thing happened was we did deploy one person to uh north carolina it was my communications coordinator by the way, for those who don't know, we're a five-person staff, one of those being an, an admin person. So uh, when I say I've one, it's, it takes a little bit of a bite out of what we're doing down right here. But uh, and he actually was gone for 10 days. He came back on Saturday from North Carolina. Uh, so that was the biggest thing there. Uh, upcoming events, I had one of my uh, people, uh, Carrie Clark, she's in uh, a team of class instructor methodology so she can get better at being on the podium. Uh, we also are teaching a hazmat IQ class on the 27th there at the EOC. Uh, and next week on Tuesday for the citizens, we're uh, hosting a National Weather Service National Storm Spotter class at 6 p.m. at the EOC as well. Uh, they, this is their way of getting information quickly. Uh, I'm sure there's some storm spotters that are reporting on the Bradyville storm as it happened right, right by the time we went into this meeting. but. Uh, but they do a good job. Uh, the meteorologist, Chrissy Hurley, from there is very entertaining by herself, and they put out a lot of good information. So I wanted to say that in front of the camera and everything so people were still on the fence about showing up. Uh, it's first come, first serve, and we can probably hold about 50 people. Uh, as far as responses, there's three major responses, and you have the reports there. We had an illegal barn, a couple of spills. The way it works for you, those of you that don't know, the reason why we don't have that many calls is, is for emergency management to go out on a call. It's something that either involves hazardous materials or it's an expanding event or an event that has a potential expand to where they require our services, whether it be getting uh, assets from outside the county, from the state, or the possibility that we might have to open the EOC uh, and staff it. So that's why we don't roll on everything. Normally, we're called out by other uh, emergency agencies, whether they be the county or the cities. There are some things that we do roll out on our own, and those are typically hazmat. Uh, and you'll see those reports in there, and I won't go through them in a lot of detail. Overall, that's my report. I do have one other thing, which is a application for the Homeland Security grant, which uh, I think we'll probably do separately. Let's prove the report first. Anybody have any questions? Yes, um, I just wanted to question you on where we stand on the building the Eagleville Tower. Right right now we're still working with, because we're building a tower on 
for those of you who don't know, CUD. we're working with CUD right now, and what we've done at this point is do some uh, uh, preliminary checks to see what it's going to take to build the tower, and it's going to take a little more than we thought because it's just a big old rock out there uh, where we're going to drill in at, and uh, I'll tell you what, for next meeting, I'll come back in and have you a, a more full report on where we stand at this point, especially since there's new places in the room. I appreciate you bringing it up, Mr. Thank you. Any other questions? Do I have a motion? Move to approve. Commissioner Gorda. Second. Second. Commissioner Phillips. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, the other thing I have is uh, the application for the annual Homeland Security Grant Program. Uh, it's something that comes every year. The amount varies. Uh, just to give you a little background on it, we're part of uh, District 5. There are seven counties in District 5. Uh, and what happens is there are these subcommittees, one of them being response, one of them being law enforcement, and others who come up with projects that benefit the security district as a whole. And those get approved at the committee, subcommittee levels, and then they come up to the task force. And the seven EMA directors uh, basically draw the red line of what's going to get funded. So this year, our piece of it, uh, amongst uh, a handful of projects, is $94,645. Now, that doesn't always stay the same. Some years we get a bigger piece of this pie, some years not so much. But that's where we are at this time. And that's to uh, support projects put forward by Smyrna PD, Laverne PD, ESSO, there's multiple ones for ESSO, and SORT, as well as Smyrna Fire and Laverne Fire. And, uh, and honestly, this, uh, this amount of money, I, I don't, I, it's been going down over the years. It's at, uh, for the entire district is $695,000, but it has started to level off to a certain amount. And uh, every district does it differently. Our district does it by projects, and the projects have to meet the parameters set out that there's, that whatever you purchase needs something that can benefit everyone as a whole. For instance, the, uh, the MRAP that was bought for the Sheriff's Office a few years ago, that doesn't just, that's not just for Rutherford County. If, if Davidson County needs it and make, picks up the phone, SO rolls it. That's just the way it works. Uh, and everything in here is the same way. So I just want y'all's permission for the, the mayor to sign the application and so we can move forward. Motion to approve. Second. D. Is that Virgil that? Yes, sir. Commissioner Gammon. Any discussion on approval? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank y'all. Any other business? If not, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Move you got it. Stand up by, by your approval. I'm a favorite. Stand up, right?